Hello again. As many of you know, I like a bit of porcelain in my doll's house. And I was browsing uh, eBay recently, which I don't do a lot because it takes a lot of time um, trying to sort through all the, well, <laughs> lesser nice, not so nice miniature items. Um, but I was pretty chuffed with myself when I found this beautiful uh, tureen. Do a doll's house, it says uh, Coalport Miniature Ming Rose Doll's House Serene. Look at that, that's lovely. And uh, it's marked underneath. Where's the mark here? Um, so I was pretty happy. And, um, and I actually also found here um, a little sauce boat to go with it. And there was a, a mug, I think, as well, and similar other items. I think there was a, which was actually Wedgwood, but it matched really well, uh, a teapot. But, um, so I was, I mean, 35 pounds. I was okay with that. I don't know why this is in pounds. Uh, I don't understand eBay very well. I don't understand how I can change the setting. Um, mine is in Canadian English. I have no idea why, because I'm in the Netherlands. But anyway, um, so I scrolled down. This is what I wanted to tell you. Scrolled down to the item specifics and I looked at it and it says, yep, 12 scale. So I thought, well, fantastic. And then I noticed it said item width three inches. And I thought, hang on, three inches. Now I'm not in inches, so we work in centimeters and millimeters. But I know how big an inches and I thought three inches that's not right because look that is three inches I mean that's my hand that's the width almost the width I mean of my hand that's not 12 scale and I've got a little tureen here this is one by Yen Storp a silver one but that doesn't matter it's about the, this is a 12 scale one so this the width of this one is around three centimeters. There we go. So that's one inch and a bit. I never understand how to get these, like, well, get one and a half inch, but this is, I don't know, ah, one inch and a bit. So um, you see the difference here? It should be, it should be around here and it is, that's the size. And it says height is two inches, so it's this high. Uh, I mean, that's not 12 scale. So, of course, I'm happy I didn't, I saw, I noticed that and I didn't buy it. And I just wondered if that ever happened to you. Uh, did you ever order something from eBay where it said 12 scale and it wasn't? So I'd like to hear that. Um, yeah, pity. It's very nice. Last week I showed you these two photos on my Instagram. A cupboard bed I made from a kit for an attic project. And I made the sheets from scraps of real 17th century linen. And I thought you might like to see some more of this attic project. Or projects, plural, as I made two attics, slightly different from each other.
The attic with the cupboard bed was the second attic I made, and I'll show you more of that one later. This was the first attic room box I made. The linen you see here is not 17th century, but just bits of cotton I quickly cut out of a sheet, and I put in some miniatures from my collection, and all of this to dress it up a bit, otherwise you would just see this, which is a bit boring. The room box was made to display 17th century silver miniatures related to laundry and attics, which is similar to the large Dutch 17th and 18th century doll's houses you see in museums. But let me start at the beginning, because of course before I built these room boxes there's the design phase, and after deciding on some basic requirements for the room, I make a cardboard mock-up in the scale I will be building in. And this is all just very simple, to have a look at scale and what works and what doesn't. And here we looked at putting in a cupboard, something on the wall, and some benches and a table. The powder brush taped against the wall represents just something we'd like to put there, but we don't know what yet. The different sized wide cubes represent silver miniatures that have to find a place in the room box somewhere. In the next stage, a fireplace was put against the left wall, some sort of small cupboard against the right wall, and shelving against the back wall. But the final design had a glass-fronted cabinet against the back wall, and shelving against the right wall. The laundry rack on the ceiling was always part of the design, from the start. One of the things I made for this room box, or for both room boxes in fact, is this ironing table, which is a large board on trestles, and this ironing table, or ironing board basically, was based on the one seen in the old cabinet doll's houses, like for instance this one in the Petronella Dunois doll's house from 1676, which is at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. And the other thing that's based on these old doll's houses is the drying rack hanging from the ceiling. I still don't know how they got the clothes and sheets on there, as the drying rack is quite high up and fixed to the ceiling. A ladder? Or some sort of special tool, perhaps? You wouldn't normally see a glass-fronted cabinet in a drying attic, but perhaps it was a cabinet which was no longer needed in the living areas of the house, but could be put to good use in the attic. A fireplace would also not be found in a drying attic. Just imagine the soot getting onto the crisp white linens. <gasps> <laughs> but a fire would dry the clothes faster. And in a room box it gives many more options for decorating. So... <laughs> Above the ironing board I've made an adjustable shelving unit. And I don't know if anything like this existed in the 17th century, but it's nice to be able to change the height of the shelves. That woke you up a bit, didn't it? <laughs> so this is what the room box looked like when I finished it. Of course, with the wonderful old silver miniatures in it, instead of my mismatched collection, it looked even better. But I'm afraid I don't have any photos of that. The design of the second attic room box started out with this fantastic row of cabinets against the back wall. And the cabinets would be made from kits by Arjen Spinhove, which I would adjust to fit the wall. And I loved this design, but unfortunately it didn't leave enough room for some of the silver miniatures that had to go in there. But doesn't it look fantastic? I, I think I may still make this for myself one day. Even with less cabinets against the wall, it still didn't work. Then the cupboard bed came into the design, first flanked by two cabinets or cupboards, but in the end it was decided that freestanding would be best. 
This bed again was a kit by Arjen Spinhoven. The rest of the attic design was similar to the first one, with an ironing table, a fireplace and an adjustable shelving unit, and of course a drying rack. The cupboard bed, although a great kit, was still a bit of a challenge to paint and put together, and I changed it a little bit and left some of the decoration off, so the style would fit better in uh, a plain attic. And as I said before, I made the bedding and the sheets for the drying rack from scraps of real 17th century linen. I kept the best parts of the linen and placed the pattern so that it didn't include the small holes and tiny stains of the fabric. And here with the sheets blowing in the wind you can see quite clearly the lovely damask pattern of the linen. And one of the other sheets had some very pretty delicate edging to it. The sheets hang from removable wooden rods on the drying rack. And the drying rack is fixed to the ceiling beams with pegs. From the small strips of linen I had left over, I made some folded laundry to go with the ironing table. And I just managed to make little sheets and a pillow for this wonderful silver cradle. The silver cradle was made in Amsterdam in 1739 by well-known silversmith Arnoldus van Geffen. And I just have to add, this cradle is not mine. <laughs> so you see, two very similar room boxes, yet they look quite different from each other. And you should really see them as they were meant to be seen with the silver miniatures in them. But as I said before, I don't have those photos. Mm -hmm.